to the second hand and then go to your toes and then go to your toes. But God is good. We have so much, so much, so much to be thankful for. It is good to be alive. So we are grateful uh, because the God we serve is a God of love. Again, I say welcome to our worship service. It is my prayer that whatever said, done, spoken, God will use that to minister to your need because I understand we all uh, have needs. Uh, we are celebrating this pain, the aches, disappointment, confusion. But in the midst of it all, Jesus said, come on to me. All of you who have labor, uh, you work, you live life, and uh, the, the life has uh, a way of uh, taking a toll on you. He said, you will find rest for your weary soul. And that's what we come to offer today. There is hope in Jesus. Amen. Praise team will come and join us. Let's uh, just lift the name of Jesus higher and higher. Because our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Yes, our God is a good God. And that's why we sing.
because of God, the goodness of God that I know that I always got a blessing with my name on it. Makes no difference what you're going through. See, you're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. So hold your head up with a smile on your face. See, this is another test, and it won't last always. So get ready. Get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. You've been hurting deep down inside, but let me encourage you that it's gonna be alright. See troubles and trials, this is come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. So get ready, get ready for your blessing, for your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle.
got a blessing with my name on it. That means you have to be intentional. You have to know that uh, God loves you regardless and that the Bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but it was God that woke me up this morning. And because he woke me up, it makes me to know that somebody loved me, cared for me, and there is hope for the future. So I come to say, BRCC. Be ready for the coming of Christ. BRCC. Be ready for the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus some praise in the house. You know, he didn't just wake us up to come and sit, lay back in our get ready at the end of the day, watch TV, but to lift him up and praise him. The Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. You know what that means? You know, when before you woke up, people in Kenya, uh, East Africa, were praising Jesus. Before the people in Kenya, people in India, China, North Korea, wherever they were, they were praising Jesus. Now is your time. Now, if you don't do it, guess what? God's not missing anything because there are people praising him anywhere, everywhere. Amen? So we are here to lift Jesus up, to celebrate life. Uh, Thanksgiving has just come and gone, but somebody said every day is a day of Thanksgiving, right? Every day is a day of Thanksgiving because God has been mighty good to us and we have so much. We have so much, so much. Somebody do your arm like this. Do your arm like this. Do your arm like this. We got so much so much to be thankful for, right? So much. We got bed, we got food, we got clothes, we got shoes, we can watch TV, we got cell phones. Talk to me, Jesus. We have so much. Do you know that somebody went to bed hungry on Thanksgiving Day on the planet? And many of us put food in the trash. Yeah. I'm not saying that to make you guilty, but I'm saying that to let you know that we are blessed. We are blessed beyond measure. You know, we are blessed. <laughs> we are blessed beyond measure. So we've come to just give God some praise and thank him for life. Uh, your situation may be different from mine. Some people's loved ones are in the hospital. Some pass and go on to be with the Lord. Uh, uh, relationships uh, separated. Uh, child sick. No money to pay bills. No job. Uh, some people are homeless. And so we are aware of all that. But in the midst of our circumstances, the Bible says, we need not forget that God loves us. Amen. God loves us all. So I invite you to join us as we stop to pray. And you know when you are praying, prayer is uh, coming in the presence of God, recognizing that God is listening to you. You talk to God for what's on your mind. Pray for your loved ones family, friends, teachers, people you care for. And then people who don't care for you, thank God for them too. Yeah, it's a good thing to do as a believer. And then uh, you pray those, pray for those who are celebrating, like in our congregation, there are a few individuals who are celebrating birthdays. We want to lift them up for this month. Uh, Jonathan celebrated a birthday yesterday. Amen. Yeah. He's 18 years old. And uh, He's a man. And I said, Jonathan, you ready to get married? He said, no, not yet. I said, okay, so you're a man, but you're not a man yet. Hey, man, we got Miss Diane Kennedy celebrating birthday today, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there are a few more celebrating birthday in November. Some have already done that. I may not be able to go over all the names. But say, we love you. We care for you. You are part of our family, so you are special to us. And I want to remember our sister, uh, Minister um, Evander, who... Uh, bury her loved one yesterday in the, uh, Andersonville, Louisiana. I just want to thank God for the team that went with me to be a part of that, and we were able to come back. It's a blessing. So, Evanda and family, the Bonds family, we are praying for you today. Uh, we are praying for you. Despite the fact you have too many preachers in your family, the RCC is praying for you. Uh, we love you. So, uh, you are here, and there's something happening in your life. Uh, um, loss of a loved one, sick. Uh, not sure about tomorrow. I said, join me. Let's just talk to God. Amen. Father God, we're grateful. We bless you. We love you. We ask you, God, to just uh, bless our worship service. And God, I mentioned a few names and situations. And there are some, Lord, that I did not mention, some I don't know about. 
But I know, God, that you know. Because you're wise, you know everything. I pray this morning, God, pray that your grace will rest upon this worshiping audience and those watching. Bless somebody today. Heal somebody today. Encourage somebody today. Lift somebody's spirit today, oh God. Open door for somebody today in the name of Jesus. Put a smile on somebody's face today, oh God. Put joy in somebody's heart. I say thank you for giving us this place where we can come and worship you as a family. Bless us, God. Make us a blessing to this community and beyond. We pray for our, our faith family members all over the globe where they are connected with PRCC, Lord. All across this United States where people are connected with us. Bless each person, oh God. And as Christmas comes, Lord, put us in the right frame of mind to know that we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. So again, God, receive our praise. Receive our prayers. Speak to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to celebrate life in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. And again, say, Welcome to be our CC. Praise team will come again to lead us in a time of singing. Please feel free to sing along. And uh, just celebrate Jesus as we prepare to preach and uh, wrap up Romans chapter 12 today. Uh, be meditating on that, that God will speak to all of us. Amen. Amen. So as we begin this next song, um, it speaks about being holy, coming into holiness. Church is not a place filled with perfect people, but it's a church filled with imperfect people serving a perfect God. So if you're listening to me, don't, as we, even though you see us up here giving God praise, let us, I need you to understand that we're still going through some things. Yeah. But I know for me personally, when I give God praise, I feel free. Meaning no matter what I'm going through outside of this place of worship, I can let it go. But I trust God, the God, the perfect God that I serve, the holy God that I serve to bring me through. I don't know how he's going to do it. Sometimes I don't even know when he's going to do it, Miss Lee, but I trust that God is going to do it. But I thank him for the goodness. I thank him for the blessings, but I pray that he bring me into holiness, a life truly devoted to him. Thank you. 
Rehearsal for light beyond. Amen. Okay, let me say that again. <laughs> this is a dress rehearsal for the life after this. We are here for a moment, and then when our time comes, the Lord will call us home. Amen. Let's not forget that. You live, you do your best, but death comes. Until Jesus returns, people will leave this planet. I'm 63. I don't know how long I have to be here, but I'm trusting God that uh, uh, he'll give me strength to continue to do what he's called me to do. Amen. And I'm praying the same for you also. So we have a uh, scripture uh, to be put up, Romans chapter 12. And uh, as the scripture is coming up, the Bible says, without holiness, no man can see God. Not talking about perfection. Talking about being set apart. Consecrated for God and for God alone. 
So let's pray before we read our scripture. I want you to just say a prayer for yourself. Pray for myself. You know, if your life is not consecrated, dedicated to God, think about it. Because that's what Romans 12 is all about. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray. Your word is about holiness. It's impossible to see you. The word says, be ye holy because I am holy. That's our prayer to do, God. Of all that we experience, of all that we go through, God. Help us to live a life for you in church, at home, on the job, in traffic, when we go to shop, wherever we go, among families and friends. Help us to always realize, God, that we belong to you and that we are special in your sight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, come on now. Let's stand and uh, turn to Romans chapter 12. Uh, it's on the board for those of us who are here. And uh, to read, we're reading, I think, verse 14 through 21. Amen. Amen. We're trying to wrap up, wrap up Romans 12, then we'll go to 13, and then we'll go to 14, 15, 16, and then we end it. And then uh, I'm sure God has already worked something else up for our fellowship for the coming 2023 uh, ministry year. But Romans chapter 12, verse 14 uh, to 21. Good. So I will read 14 and you read 15 like we've been doing before. Bless those who persecute you. So, mm. Bless and do not curse. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Together, do not be overcome by evil. Amen. And our children will go to their special service. Amen. And adults will open our Bible and uh, begin to talk again about uh, what, we, uh, what, what the Lord has to say to us in these few verses we, we just read as we continue our conversation on the Roman road to peace. The Roman road to peace. We started in chapter 1 a long time ago, and uh, we are in chapter 12. We've spent, this is our third Sunday in chapter 12, and uh, we want to uh, just bring it to a close. But from chapters 1 to chapter 11, Paul's talking about doctrine, talking about belief, talking about what we uh, incorporate in our lives as believers. And then chapter uh, 12 through 16, he's talking about behavior, how to live out our Christian life. Now that I'm a believer, I mean, uh, what makes me different, set me, set me apart from just the average Joe Blow out there, the ordinary person out there who is not a Christian. If I met somebody in the workplace, the person is a Muslim, a Buddhist, uh, a non-believer. What makes me different from that person? If I'm in class and I'm in school, I'm a student. What makes me different from my fellow students if they don't know Jesus? So that's the thing. Now, if you have somebody in your class, in your school, you know, in your neighbor who believe Jesus like you do, that should be a wonderful thing because you got support, you got friends, you got people to interact with, to pray with, even if you don't know what they're praying for you. And so Paul, in chapter 12, he said, you know, as it's broken up, you know, when Paul was writing it, he did not put like, captions and all that, but as scholars read over the years to make it sim uh, simple for other believers to capture the essence of the message, uh, they kind of break it up. So in chapters, um, chapter 12, 1 through verses 1 and 2, you see the Christian is uh, presented as a sacrifice on the altar. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. So if you, I mean, none of us, we've never been to know uh, like Jewish worship system before. And so sometimes the idea is kind of far from our mind. But as Paul is writing, he's a Jewish rabbi. He went to the temple over and over, and they would carry sheep. They would carry goat. They would bring something. 
the priest would take it, kill it, put it on the altar, and burn it, you know, as a sacrifice to God. Remember, Abraham had to go sacrifice his son, Genesis chapter uh, 22, I think it is. And God said, do not kill the boy. And so in Jesus, the Bible said Jesus is that perfect sacrifice for us who put himself on the cross for God to forgive us of our sins. So we don't have to make sacrifices like buying candle, buying sheep. Can you imagine, you know, um, uh, if we were making sacrifices, you know, in those like old days, days of old, when you were coming to church in the morning, you'd be bringing like sheep, you know, uh, put a rope on the sheep. And the sheep uh, some people carry goat, 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 goats are stubborn, you know. You go say, no, I know you're taking me to BQ. I'm not going with you today. And so you'll be doing all that. But thank God for Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews, the sacrifice that God demands or wants from us, sacrifice of our lips, praise, 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 praise from our heart, appreciating God for who he is. So we are a sacrifice, sacrifice on the altar, he said. Let your mind be renewed. Don't live like everybody else. You know, not because it feels good, so you do it. No, live for God. And then in that verse 1 through 8, Paul says, as a believer in the church, as he was talking to the church in Rome, you are a part of the body. Just as your human physical body has parts, hands, feet, legs, eyes, and all that, he said the church is the body of Christ. The local church where you are assigned is a body. And each, I mean, and that body has parts, and you are a member, you are a part of that. Uh, 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 then you need to ask yourself, am I the head? Am I an eye? Am I a nose? Am I an ear? Am I a feet? Just like your body, because we have to, we have to uh, play our part for things to work. You know, uh, somebody has to vacuum, and somebody has to turn the light on, if somebody, if somebody did not come here early to turn the heat on this morning, uh, it will be very cold in here, right? I knew a pastor who, uh, before he hired somebody on staff, he will observe you. They were in a situation where they had to move chairs, you know, every week, straighten out and all that. So people will come around the church, they're looking for a ministerial position. If you're not willing to move chairs, he's not bringing you on staff. Because it's not about you. It's about the body. Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to make your presence felt? God has gifted all of us. You know, look around your church. And I'm so thankful to God for the young people we have here, like Brendan, you know, who, little boy, used to go to his uh, baseball game when I look back at those pictures and things. You know, tiny little baby right there. But now he comes early morning to turn the cameras on. Think about Jonathan, his contribution. Think about uh, uh, Mackenzie, the little girl who came here with her mom. She can come and put the cameras when she's here. All the other kids we have in the church who participate. It's a wonderful thing. So find your place. What has God given you uh, to serve with? And so in there, Paul talks about the fact that uh, we have gifts, gifts to serve, to serve, to care, to provide. So think about that, Romans chapter 12, 3 through 8, he talks about the gifts. In uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, he talks about the gifts also. Uh, in Romans, I mean, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about the gifts. Let me, let me just flip over to um, 1 Corinthians 12 and see what some of the gifts that Paul talked about here. In verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its members' parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, black or white, male or female, old or young, we are all given the same spiritual drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many parts. Now, if the foot says, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, would it not be, I mean, would it not for that reason stop being a part of the body? I mean, common sense. Paul said, your foot said, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, uh, because I'm not a hand, so I'm not part of the body, uh, it's still attached to it, right? Yeah. 
The I may say, well, because I'm not an ESO, I'm not. No, no, no. You are, let me put it this way. Uh, um, um, the professional statisticians say in every church, you have 20% of the people do all the work. 20% of the people give. And 80% just come and pray and go. But does that make them uh, exclusive of the body? No. They're still part of the body. And so what the Bible's encouraging is, if you're part of the body, you are being fed, people are praying for you, 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 know, you take pride in where you come, he said, get involved. Get involved. That's how people will know when you are not here. And, um, and uh, he goes on to say, verse 18, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? So that's why we have different parts. And so in the church also, we have people who can sing, people who can play, people who are willing to serve when it's time for the potluck, people who can go and set the table. You know, we all do our part, and everybody go home rejoicing. So in Ephesians, he says some of the gifts, Ephesians chapter 4, to teach, to preach, the gift of evangelism, the gift of pastor, to be a pastor. So the church has administrative needs. It has uh, spiritual needs. Uh, everything about our life as believers should not always be just limited to what? Uh, we stop to read Bible and to pray. Life is more than that. God wants you to be the walking, talking Bible that people can see. And when you do that, folks will not be afraid of you. Amen. They see a smile, the Bible that can smile. They see somebody who's loving, the Bible that loves. So Paul said, you know, do that. And then um, in verses 9 through 13, Paul said, you know, uh, we are like, we're members of the family. In the church, we are a family, right? It's true. Coretta is my family. Uh, Miss Barbara is my family. Miss Jenny is, yes, yes. Some days, you know, when I'm driving around the community, I say, let me drive by Miss Jeannie's house and see how she's doing. I'm serious. And I go, yeah, I say, she's okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I do that. I do that on purpose. I drive by Miss Mary's place, go around, see uh, uh, Melinda right over there. That's how we're supposed to do. Care one for another. Look at verse 13 of uh, chapter uh, 12. He says, Share with, no, no, let me read 12 first. Be joyful. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And then when you see prayer right there, with the next word that comes after prayer, share, right? Share with the lost people who are in need. Bottom line, what Paul is saying, when you are a member of a family, member of a local church, be concerned by the people around you. Text them. Now that we got text. Text. You know, my wife forces with me for calling people early. And sometimes she's right because I'm an early wake, uh, person. I wake up early, like you at 4 o'clock. And I think everybody should be up at that time. No. Some people get up 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 9. I mean, you see what I'm saying? But the point I'm making is get in touch with someone. If somebody sends you a text, maybe mistakenly respond, say, hey, are you there? What's up? <laughs> they might say, oh, it was by mistake. But you know, at least you're communicating with somebody. Paul said, when, when strangers, visitors come in your midst, Welcome them, recognize them, let them know that they are important. Be hospitable, he said. Take people out, invite them, spend time. Go out to eat. When we, um, you know, people from different cultures have different ways of uh, showing hospitality. So uh, growing up in Liberia, every time somebody says, I um, want you to come, let's go eat, it means they're inviting you to their house or you are going to their home, right? So when we came to America the first time, and the family wanted to invite, uh, plan to invite us, said, this coming Sunday, we're going to eat. So my wife and I, we thought, yeah, we're going to the people's house, right? Okay, so we went to a restaurant, like, oh. But that's the culture, that's how life works here. You know, so you can go to a restaurant, some people are comfortable opening their homes, and there's nothing wrong with that, bring your friends, and you know, in home, that's when people can really relax, and you get to know them. You know, get in the home and take off their shoes and, you know, uh, socks and, you know, all that. But that's where you get to see people for who they are. Uh, so it's a, it's a good thing uh, to be hospitable. Now, in the last session of chapter 12, uh, Paul said, you know, uh, the Christian is like a peace officer on assignment. From verse 14 through, through uh, 21. He said, bless those who persecute you. You heard that before, right? If you read Matthew chapter 5. 
Jesus said, bless and curse not. Hmm? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Now in Matthew 5, you know what I mean, in um, Romans 12, 14 to the end, Matthew chapter 5, and somewhere in Luke, Jesus speaking to his disciples about their attitude, how to live among the people around them. You know, when somebody do you bad, it causes you pain. Yeah. Gossip, slander, lie, cheat, whatever, rob you. It causes pain. And as human, the tendency is to fight back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to fight back. Some people don't fight with their physical hands, but they fight with words. Or your children did something to you, your husband did something to you, or your boyfriend, and you're going to tell them something that cut real deep. Mm -hmm. Or somebody you don't know in the workplace. The promotion comes and they keep what? Skipping you. So then, on the inside, we want to fight, but Jesus said, by not throwing blows and saying mean words means you're not fighting. There are other ways to fight. So as Christians, as peace officers, we get out there. You know, we, 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 we are blessed to be children of God. But there's also a burden that comes with it. You know, we have challenges. So he said, when those challenges come, be calm. You know, remember Jesus said, if somebody slap you on one cheek, turn the other. I heard a guy say, you know, after I turn the other and they slap me on one cheek, he said, Jesus said, just two slaps. And the third one's not going to come to me. You know, so Paul's saying the same thing Jesus said. Bless <laughs> and curse not. And then he said in verse 15, he said we should be sympathetic, right? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Bottom line, in your congregation, in your fellowship, everybody will not be at the same station, same emotional state. Some people will be there to bury their loved ones. Somebody's sick. At the same time, someone is there uh, celebrating birthday or child's graduation, wedding anniversary. There's a lot will be going on in your church. You say create a balance. Think about each other. You can't say, oh, well, you know what? Um, my, my, my mom just passed, and, you know, what they're doing over there, uh, the child's birthday celebration, that's none of my, no, 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 no. Get involved. I remember, I remember a um, uh, true story. Just before uh, <laughs> Chastel and I got married, we set our wedding date, everything. Church knew that 12 months in the van, 12 months, yeah. <sighs> I said, we drew now, just the, the week before, one of our members, Providence Baptist Church, at the chair of that trustees board died. And the deacon scheduled the wedding, I mean the funeral the same day. And when I'm talking funeral in Africa, it's long. Especially depending on who died. The funeral could take four hours. And we have wedding schedule for four o'clock. They had to set the church up and all of that. Baby, I'm telling you, it wasn't a welcome news. So I went to my wife's parents, and uh, we were all kind of like tense. But the Lord spoke to me that day. He said, uh, if you're a leader in the church, especially for you, uh, Paul said, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. So I went to my wife's parents. I said, you know, we're in a big house, family, a big family. We have to just accommodate everybody. Uh, deacons made a mistake. They weren't thinking. But uh, God will cover everything. And God showed it. We had the funeral that morning. Before 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, our team that was there to set up for the wedding had gone in. When you got back there, you did not know they had a funeral right in that church that day. But that's how it's supposed to be. Your left hand might be hurting, but somebody, you know, uh, something in your, your left hand needs attention. So Paul says, as a member of the body, be concerned one for another. So um, then he goes on verse 16. Live in harmony with one another. Practice that. Learn to do that. You all may not agree on everything. 
especially in church when like time to make budget and how to spend the money and make decisions on different things. Yeah, you see people, you know, uh, true sentiment comes out. But he said, learn to live in harmony. You all come from different walks of life, different training, different way of managing stuff. But you are in Christ, you are one body. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't just be with the up and up. People who dress like you, think like you, you know, go to the same restaurant. He said, look around the congregation where embrace other people. Why? Because we are all created in the image of God. We are just at different situations, different stations. You know, uh, life has a way of uh, changing, you know. Sometimes you meet somebody down the road, and uh, six years later, you see them at a different station. They look different. Maybe in your mind, they look better than you met them. And then now you want to get close to them because they smell, you know, good. You know, uh-uh. Paul said, learn to what? Shake hands with everybody. You know, spend some time, recognize those who are there. He said, do not be conceited. Verse 17, do not pay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Yes, why? Because, uh, I mean, we are not here to please people, right? But we are servants of God. Servants of God. You know, some people, uh, uh, for them, you are the only Christian, uh, Jesus Christ, you know, the Bible that they have before them. So uh, live so that God will be uh, uh, recognized in your life. He said, do not take revenge, verse 19. My dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to revenge, uh, to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Why is it um, good to not take revenge and leave things with God? Because God does not want you to feel guilty when things begin to happen. The God that we serve is a righteous judge. He will pay people for the evil they do to other folks. But God said, when it happens to you, let God handle it. Because when you take it on your own, the next time your conscience will start pricking you and say, why did I do that or what? You know what I'm saying? But when God himself does it, you might even show mercy and say, God, please forgive them. On the contrary, say, if your enemy is hungry, feed. It's a good thing, folks. If you know somebody, know for sure that this person does not does not like you, does not wish you any good. The Bible says if you, if you recognize that that person is in need, be kind to them. Yeah. Be kind to them. Be kind to them. Be kind to them. Uh, if your enemies thirst the same thing, give him drink. And then verse 21, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's what the Christian life is really all about, to represent Christ. Don't allow evil. Don't allow, don't allow uh, pain. Don't allow hurt. Don't allow uh, 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 those kind of things to control your life. Remember in verse, I think, 9, he said, let love be sincere. When love controls your life, it helps you to see things uh, through God's lenses. Because we are all human. We are fallen. We are sinners. We make mistakes. We lie. Sometimes we cheat. I know, you know, when my wife, um, when I'm going to pick her up sometime, we have one car, and I've been at the computer, and um, I wasn't paying attention to the time. I'm supposed to be there. And like, oh, I'm about 15 minutes late. And then she calls me like, Eddie, where are you? I say, oh, I'm at your exit. And I know I'm not at your exit. Yeah, we do that. And so the Bible says, show mercy. If somebody hurt you, yeah, it'll be painful, but step back. You know, think about the police officers who go out to make peace. Sometimes some show prejudice, you know, depending on the color of the skin of the person they're interacting with. As a result, many young people lost their lives, especially many young black people. And so as Christians, we are like peacekeepers, peace officers in our community. Paul is saying, the Bible is saying, when you get out there, don't look at the complexion of the skin, but treat people 
I mean, treat everyone as well. Those created in the image of God. And when you do that, at the end of the day, when you get home, you will sleep in peace. Yeah, some people will challenge your authority. But he said, uh, just bless them. Be kind to them. Stay on your duty. Serve God. Uh, and uh, and what he said, Paul said, as long as much as it depends on you, make every effort to be at peace with everyone. I love that passage. Somebody may have issues with me. <laughs> you don't, maybe you don't want to see me, talk to me, and not thinking well of me, but Paul says, it's on you. As long as it depends on you. Pray for that person. Reach out. Make effort to reach out to them. Because when you are living in peace with your neighbors and your friends and your loved ones and your conscience is clear, guess what? You can face them with your head up every day wherever you see them. If you go to shop wherever they are, you don't have to duck behind. No, no, no. You can face and say, hello, my brother, my sister. It's a good thing. When you are living at peace with all, yeah, yeah. So I leave that with you this morning. The Jesus we serve is uh, 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 a man of peace. Say, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be children of God. And in the body of Christ, you are sacrificed on the altar, a part of the body, member of the family, and a peace officer assignment. All of this is possible when you practice verses 1 and 2 of chapter 12. I urge you, my brothers and sisters, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. If you know that every day, whatever you do, you are a child of God, servant of God, and live with that mentality, the rest will fall in place. So this is my prayer that we will practice. God will give us strength. Can God do it for us? Yes, he can. He has done it for someone before, and he can do it for you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you, God, for your written word. Thank you for your spirit that enables us to understand and apply. I pray for my brothers and sisters here this morning and those who are watching. God, that you will speak to us. Give us strength to put the word into practice as we lay for you daily, God, in the word in which, and the word that is unfriendly to, believe, unfriendly to believers in many places. Bless us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And before, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. And before we go off the air quickly, I just want to say to you, my brothers, my sisters, wherever you are, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, if you have not recognized the fact that Jesus died for your sins, and the Spirit speaking to you, I offer Jesus to you because without him, the Bible says eternity is not sure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the Bible says those who believe will not be condemned but have eternal life. And it's that eternal life we offer to you. And eternal life starts here. And when you have eternal life, you also have abundant life. You have peace, joy, and uh, confidence in God. So if you don't know Jesus, I say, hey, I extend that to you. If you know Jesus but you've never been baptized before, we say BRCC. I say, come, and we explain to you what baptism means, and we will do that for you. If you don't have a church home and you are looking for a church to be connected to, we say BRCC. We say, welcome you. If you are here, you can see, you know, we have room for many more. So may God bless you, guide you, and uh, direct our steps. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. And in this uh, visible audience, I guess the door of the church is open always. May God bless us. Amen.